Hello and welcome to this fifth lesson using Alice. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to use loops to save us time and instructions. We will start by telling you the story of the Great Flood. This is a common story throughout many Aboriginal groups, as well as Christianity and other religions. One day, a long, long time ago, the tide water started to rise. The people began to worry as the water was starting to reach their homes. They collected all their belongings and put them into their canoes. As the water rose, the canoes were carried away. The water rose even more. They paddled to the highest mountain. When they reached the top of the mountain, one of the men made a long anchor rope of cedar bark. He made a huge pile so they could stay anchored. Finally, the whole mountain was covered except the very tops of the trees. The people anchored their canoes to the tops of the trees. The rain was very heavy and soon covered the treetops. No one knows how long it rained. They were anchored there for a long, long time waiting to see what would happen. They were well prepared and had lots of dried salmon to eat. After many days, a raven came and landed on the bow of their canoe. He seemed to be telling them something. Suddenly a man said, Look what is emerging. As he pointed to a mountain in the distance, this is the news the raven was bringing. Finally, the flood was over. The floodwaters began to go down. When the water went down enough, they got out of their canoes and rested as they were very tired. Before they left the mountain, they gathered together in a circle around a huge coil of rope. They prayed and gave thanks to the mountain that had saved them. And we shall recreate this scene in Alice. Looping does pretty much what it sounds like it does. It loops around and around doing the same thing over and over a number of times. In other words, if you want your object to raise its leg five times, you just put that one instruction in a loop and make the loop happen five times. So how do you make a loop? Well, by now you've probably already seen it next to the other blocks at the bottom of your screen. All you need to do is drag it into your instruction box and tell it how many times you would like it to happen. We're going to pick three. We can put any instructions we want in there, but let's select the Aboriginal girl object and find the give thanks method and drag it into our loop. We will also do the same for the Aboriginal man. Put his give thanks method in as well. Okay, let's press play and see what happens. You can see here that each person is giving thanks independently. It will take too long to wait for each person to do their own method. So let's stop it and see if we can modify our instructions. We should put them all together in a do together block. Let's see how that looks. There you go. They're all giving thanks together and with just six instructions. To do that without the loop would have involved 18 instructions, which would make our code look much more complicated. Our goal is to keep it all as simple as possible. The loop is one of the most powerful things available to you in Alice. As you progress through the tutorials, you will begin to see just how it can be used to do some remarkable things. At this point, however, we'll keep it simple and just show its most basic purpose. Next time, we'll show you how you can create your own methods just like the ones we use today. Thanks for watching.